Your Bibles, go ahead and open up to 1 Corinthians. Uh, we're going to start in chapter 12. So we have been working through what's my role and what's your role. Uh, we've touched on passages in 1 Peter, in Ephesians, in Romans, and we're in Corinthians now. Um, one of the things that we have discovered uh, that, that should be very plain to us is that these gifts are given at, uh, on the, the determination of the Spirit, not based on us. Uh, they are to accomplish the purposes that, that God desires, they are never to be about us, okay? Uh, we've seen that there are a couple of different classifications of gifts. There's the equipping gifts that are in Ephesians 4. Uh, these are the apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor, and teacher. Uh, we see uh, in the following verses that these are to equip the members of the body to be productive, um, we see in Roman 12 uh, that there is a, a set of gifts that are body ministry gifts. They, the majority of what they do is focus on the building up of the body of Christ. Uh, and then in 1 Corinthians 12, we see the manifestation gifts, these, these gifts that are given in the moment to accomplish a particular uh, purpose at a particular place in time. Um, We've gone through quite a bit of this. Hopefully you guys have been doing uh, some of the reading and studying on your own. If not, I would encourage you to do so. I would much rather you guys were like the Bereans. Um, study the Word. Whatever I teach, I encourage you to go back to the Word and look at it. Look at it. Because I'm not perfect. My understanding of the scriptures is not perfect, okay? Um, and I'm not intimidated at all when somebody, somebody comes to me and says, uh, I disagree with you, okay? Um, so, the ministry gifts, the manifestation gifts in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, Paul immediately transitions from the, the gifts. He starts this, this middle section about the body of Christ. Now, I've spoken on this passage numerous times before. I'm not going to spend a great deal of time in here. Um, but essentially, what I want you guys to understand out of this passage is that you are needed. The body of Christ does not function the way that it should when you are not investing your gifts that the Spirit has given you into the body. Okay? Every one of us has something to give to the body of Christ. And, and when you don't do that, you rob the church, you rob the body of Christ, you rob the, the saints, and you cheat yourself. Okay? So, if you aren't sure of what gifts you have, I would encourage you. There's numerous tests out there. I don't really put a lot of stock in those tests because... Um, they're very easy manipulated, easily manipulated. Um, I would, it's okay to take those tests. Um, it, it, that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I would encourage that you would invest at least twice as much time in the Word and in prayer as you devote to those tests because God is not into keeping secrets from you. He's not into uh, the guessing game of God, where should I serve and how should I serve? Uh, he is faithful. Um, so when, when you are not being used, uh, your gifts are not being used on behalf of the body, um, there's a problem. The, the body isn't functioning at its best, at its full capacity. 
Uh, so no one can say, nah, I don't have anything to offer. Neither can anyone say, you have nothing to offer. Okay? We're not all going to serve in the same capacity. Thank God for that. Uh, Sunday services would be chaos if all of us got up on the stage and tried to do worship. Um, each of us with our own opinion about how it would best be done. Uh, the message would be even more chaotic as each of us had a different part that we wanted to expound on. Um, thankfully, God knows what the body needs to function properly and he puts each of those things in place. Uh, so you can't say I don't belong and I can't say you don't belong. It, it, it's all part of God's purposes, all part of God's plans, okay? Um, so in the body, uh, we all serve our place. As a matter of fact, Paul goes into a little bit more of an explanation here. Uh, and he says, we give honor, but we bestow greater honor on those parts that have, uh, are treated with greater modesty. Now, this is something that we could make a whole bunch of things up and say this would probably fit there. But I think what's more important is that we need to make sure that we are honoring all of the parts of the body of Christ. All of the parts, okay? Um, put this thought in mind with that. When Jesus was uh, getting ready for the Last Supper, for the Passover, for the Seder meal, before they started, he demonstrated what Christian leadership is all about. He took off his outer garment, he wrapped a towel around his waist, and he washed all of the disciples' feet. Okay. Now, I don't believe it was just 12, because scripture says there were many that followed him to Jerusalem. I think he went around and washed every one of their feet. That's the model servant leadership that God desires for the leadership in the church. Now, uh, at that time, the person that washed the feet was the lowest of the servants, the least in the company. They got the job. And Jesus took it upon himself to fulfill that role. Thereby, we know that we also are called to serve. Uh, Paul says in another passage, that uh, we are to prefer one another above ourselves. Um, you know, there's a, a thing that my mom used to have on the wall, and it said joy, and that's that's not for joy if she's here. Um, this is, oh, she's here, okay. Uh, J, Jesus, Christ first, okay. O, others, others. Quite honestly, my personal feeling is we stop at Joe. But why would then be yourself? So the, the order of priority where we de, uh, invest our time, where we devote ourselves is Christ first, and then others, and then ourselves. Um, so um, coming down here, I'm just going to wrap up um, verse 27, because I want you to catch something. Keeping in mind that when Paul wrote this letter, he did not write it with chapters and verses. Uh, that's something we put in so you guys can catch up to wherever I am. Uh, so in verse 27, chapter 12, uh, Paul writes, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Mm -hmm. But earnestly, the des earnestly desire the higher gifts. Okay, now right here, this is something that, that uh, we need to bear in mind is that God has ordained each of these things uh, for the body of Christ and not all of us are going to have all the same gifts. Okay, not everybody is gonna be called to prophecy. Not everybody is going to be called to, to working of miracles. Not everybody is going to be called to uh, speaking in tongues or interpreting 
in tongues. Uh, but, but he says in 31, but earnestly desire the higher gifts. And, and he's going to make this parenthetical statement before he comes back to that. So uh, if you write in your Bible, put a note there. Uh, if you don't write in your Bible, lock it in your head because he's going to transition very quickly into something else before he comes back to uh, desire the higher gifts. Uh, and he says, and I will show you a still more excellent way. That should tell us to perk up and pay attention. Okay? All of these things that he's addressed in, in chapter 12 are good things. They're good things. All of the gifts of the Spirit are good things. The proper functioning of the body of Christ is a good thing. But there's something better. There's something greater. Okay? And so we, we go into 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, I, I really, I mean, everybody, what does uh, 1 Corinthians 13, what is that known as? The love chapter. The love chapter. Um, I, I like that, that we can find it. It's like the hall of faith. We can go right there and we can read it. I don't like it because we tend to treat it as isolated and separate from the things before and after. And that was never Paul's intent. That was never God's intent. It is a part of a greater whole. Okay. So we're coming out of this thought, the proper functioning of the body of Christ and how the Spirit equips us for the proper functioning. And, and then we like throw on the brakes and fold that book and put it away and open another book and read this completely separately. And when we get to the bottom of it, we, we close that, put it back, and we open up this book and, and we pick up where we left off. Now this is a parenthetical statement. This is, this is an aside that Paul is doing uh, as he's... he's uh, dictating this letter. Uh, he gets to this point, and, and just like a lot of us, uh, I had a friend when we lived in Oklahoma, we called him Mr. Parenthetical Statement because he could not tell a story without seven other stories inserted into it. And you finally got back to the end of the original story and you forgot how it began. Okay, so um, Paul does this often. Um, I believe absolutely that this is divinely inspired. I believe all of this is the word of God. I think God uses the uniqueness of the individual writers in the writing. That's why we see a difference between the way that Paul writes and the way that James or Peter or John write. And, and yet they're all conveying the same message. Okay, so he, he comes into this. So for right now, cover up 13 Chapter 13, verse 1, just, just cover those numbers up. Uh, but earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I, give way, uh, if I give away all that I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Now right here, Paul who has just stressed the importance of the, gift for the, the gifts for the proper functioning of the body, he, he, he almost reverses himself and he lists all of those, those classifications that he had just presented in 12. And he says, without love they're of no value. Okay, we've got to remember that love is the foundation of everything God is involved in. If God did not love us, he would have never extended to us his grace. If God did not love us, he would never extend to us his mercy. Because God is love... We, we so get that backwards. We try to look at the, the description of love and apply it to God. That's completely backwards to the way that it should be. We should look at God so that we might understand love. Okay? So we're, we're coming in here and he, he goes through all of these qualifications and he says, all of these gifts, and he says, but if I'm doing this without love, it's of no value. It's of no purpose. Okay? And then he goes into this description of what love is. And, and 
I don't like it. <laughs> Honestly, I, 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 I really struggle with this. Because every time I read it, I see how far I've yet to go. Love is patient. See, I'm out already. <laughs> and kind. I want you, I want you to write this down. Just put love is, and then I want you to start numbering these. And this week, I want you to start looking at what each of these words mean. <coughs> And I want you to be honest with yourself and see where you're at with each of these. Now, I don't do this. I'm not asking you to do this so that you'll feel badly about yourself. That's, that's not my point at all. Um, because remember that this is not done perfectly in this life. There's not one of us that is going to do this perfectly in this life. But we should be doing it increasingly as we go through this life, such that today I should be able to look back uh, a year ago and see that I have moved forward in these areas, okay? So, uh, love is patient and kind. Kind. Um, you know that one of my, my life verses is we speak the truth in love. And, and if love is kind, that eliminates a lot of what we would convey of the truth because we don't do it from kindness. Uh, we do it to prove a point or, or to, um, you know, uh, the, well, they really needed a, a kick in the seat of the pants. That very well may be, but if it's not motivated by love, um, you've really kicked them in the seat of the pants to your own benefit. Uh, love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. Uh, another um, Paul talks about what it is and what it isn't, and I think it's necessary uh, that that you would have these on two lists because I, I personally, I tend to fall more in the things that it isn't than in the things that it is. Uh, it is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. Think about that for just a moment. It does not rejoice and wrong duty. David writes in the Psalms, uh, he asks God to uh, avenge him on those that say, aha, those that point the finger at him. And, and I think that's kind of what this uh, rejoicing at wrongdoing, uh, we should never wish for evil to come upon uh, people, we, we should wish that, that they would see, that they would accept the grace and the mercy, the love that God gives them, that whatever they're doing would be corrected, uh, and that uh, God would address the issue at its root cause, not just its outward display, uh, not just its, its effect. Um, but, but it rejoices with the truth. It rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Paul is, is pretty blunt in the way that he writes. Um, what, what does love not bear? According to what we read, what does love not bear? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. What does love not believe? Nothing. Okay. Paul, Paul is speaking in exact measures here. When he says all, he means all. Okay. Verse 8. Love never ends. Now, 
That's kind of the, the parenthetical statement that he's put. He started it off with listing all of the gifts and how they really don't have any meaning without love being the motivating force behind them. And he comes back in, he, he gives us the description of what love is uh, and what it isn't. And then he comes down in verse 8 and he ties right back into the gifts. He says, as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Some of us have never left being a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Now, I'm going to pause right there, okay? Because, again, I want us to look at this as a whole. Uh, all of these things are knit together. Paul was not thinking about gifts and all of a sudden started uh, talking about the body and, and then just had a change of thought and spoke about love and then remembered that he started off talking uh, about the gifts and, and reverse course and took us back there. All of these things are integrated. Okay? They're all one, one message that he is trying to convey to us that God wants us to know. Uh, in, in chapter 14, verse 1, um, I, I honestly, I think they, they did a disservice um, when they, they took the first part of 14 and they didn't leave it in 13. I think the, the first part of verse 1 is, is the, the, the best conclusion of 13. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. Okay? Unfortunately, we don't apply this verse the majority of the time. Or we misapply it. What are we chasing? Pursue love. love. That should be our quest. That should be what we're chasing down. We should desire spiritual gifts. Now, those two things, those, those two right there, we could make a, a series of messages on because there's so much contained in just those two statements. Pursue love. Run it down. Don't give up on the chase. Continue. Even when you thought you have got it, continue. That's why you wrote the list. So that we can understand, so that you can understand what true love is. Okay? And we should desire spiritual gifts. So many churches have completely done away with this part of this verse because the gifts, sometimes people do goofy things. Sometimes people in the name of the Holy Spirit do things that are not biblical. Okay? Because we're going to see as we move forward, there is an order in which the gifts should be used. God did just, didn't just throw these things out there willy-nilly without giving us a spirit 
to enable us to first access them and two, to properly use them. Okay? So, pursue love. That's, that's the first thing that we're, we're, we're basing our endeavors on. We are pursuing love and we should desire the spiritual gifts. And then he goes even further and we're going to see, I'm not going to get into a lot of this uh, as far as uh, how these particular gifts work. I would encourage you to read these. I would encourage you to read these without man's opinion about what this means. <clears throat> because you're... Uh, Let God's Spirit reveal God's Word to you. Okay? Now, there are some incredibly godly men that have written, and women, that have written uh, very insightful uh, treatises on, on this passage. Um, I don't want you to go to them because we typically do uh, a couple of things that are wrong. The first thing is we look to find somebody that believes what we want to believe and we read their writings to reinforce what we want to believe. Or um, we discredit somebody that writes something different to what we believe. Uh, there's been a, the, the gifts, the gifts are perfect. The vessels are not. Okay? We make mistakes. Okay? And sometimes we use a gift in a way that it was not intended to be used. That should not disqualify us from the gifts. Okay? Um, I saw several phases, and I, I'm not that old. Uh, the older I get, the more I realize that age really isn't that old. Because um, if you had asked me, in my 20s, you know, what old was, I would probably say about the age I am now. Um, and so now when, when I look uh, at those that are ahead of me, I think, well, that's not too bad. Th that's not really old. Because I sure hope that I can do the things that you guys do when I get to where you guys are. Um, but I have seen things in the church that have completely discredited the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit because things were done uh, in pursuit of the desired outcome of the use of a particular gift. And somewhere in the process, uh, the fact that these are done to edify and build the body of Christ ultimately so that the body of Christ would give glory to God it becomes about the gift itself. Um, it, it's very much like being invited to somebody's house for dinner. And you, you can uh, go to two extremes. You can go to one extreme where you are so into the dinner that you forget uh, the person that prepared it for you, the person sitting at the table that has called you to fellowship. Or you can get there and complain and gripe about everything not being what you wanted. Um, really what, what we need to do is we accept what is given to us because we love the person that is giving it. Uh, we make use of what God gives us because we love God. We want what he gives us to glorify him. Okay? Um, so, Paul goes on in chapter 14 to talk about... Uh, Specifically, he talks about speaking in tongues and uh, prophesying um, and, and where both of those fit best. Um, he lays out some rules for the proper ordering of both of these gifts. That does not mean that there are no guiding principles for other gifts. Uh, it, it just means that they were, there is a specific issue that is being dealt with here, and these, these things that he is saying, both of them have to have a proper order, a proper use. Speaking in tongues. If somebody is given a message in tongues, there should be um, 
an interpretation of the message in tongues. If there is not a message in tongues, then there should be no outflowing, outspeaking of the message in tongues. Now, um, I grew up in a church that misused this principle that if you went through a service without at least one person speaking in tongues, uh, you didn't have a good service. Um, unfortunately, oftentimes there was no interpretation. Um, that is not how God says his word is to be used. The gift of tongues is to be used. But also prophecy, that, that has some guidelines as well. Okay? Uh, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. I, I get really concerned when somebody says, God just took me along, I had no choice. Because, yeah, you do have a choice. God wants to work in cooperation with us, and if you don't want to do it, God's not going to force you to do it. Now, there are times when God gives us something to do, and it can be bloody uncomfortable. It can be completely outside of normal for you. Good. Because if you could do it in your own ability, in your own strength, I don't want it. Okay? I don't want to rob God of, of what he desires that we would have. Okay? Um, there are bents toward gifts. I believe that, that uh, God creates us specifically with gifts in mind, but I don't believe that your nature necessarily determines your giftings. Because I would not be a pastor if it were dependent on me. I'm very happy sitting in my chair back. Okay. Um, okay, so there are um, specific ways that gifts are to be used. There are specific ways they are not to be used. Uh, Paul writes in, in chapter 14, he says, do not prevent one from speaking in tongues. But if the one speaks in tongues, they should pray that they might interpret. Okay? Uh, I, I, being in a, a charismatic church years ago, um, one of the, the people made a comment that I, I have pondered for 25 years now. They said, I would rather have a wildfire than damp wood. I disagree. I think both of those are dangerous. I want a properly banked and built fire so that it doesn't, uh, so that it lights when it's supposed to light, so that it continues when it's supposed to continue. Uh, I don't want something that refuses to light, that, that refuses the flame. Neither do I want something that consumes everything in an instant and is gone. Uh, I want something that is going to endure. I want something that is going to be profitable. Uh, a well-baked, a well-constructed well fire provides heat and warmth without burning you, without damaging you. Um, there, there is a balance to these things because God is a God of order, not disorder. Okay, So uh, to, to those that have issue with the gifts being uh, at use today, okay, God's not going to jump all over you and make you do something that you don't believe is for today. But I guarantee you, if you listen, if, if you would open your heart and listen, God will use you. I guarantee it. Uh, you don't like speaking in tongues? <laughs> don't. That's the, ultimately, that is between you and God. God's not going to force you. He's not. If he wants you to speak in tongues, you are just denying yourself the blessing that God is giving you. God will find someone else. I think of Elijah. No, oh God, I am the only one. Shut up. I got 7,000 that I have chosen for myself. You're not the only one. I'm not the only one. You are not the only one. If you are not willing to be used as God would choose to use you, he will find somebody else. God's purposes will be fulfilled, and you will be the one that misses out on the blessing. 
Okay? You will. So, <clears throat> jumping over to verse 26, I'm just going to kind of encapsulate this here. Uh, what then, brothers? When you come together, each has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. See what he's saying there? What is the purpose of all of these things? Building up the body. We've got to remember that. This, this is, is never about me. It's never about you. It is about God wanting to build the body of Christ up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two, or at the most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn and all may be encouraged. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Okay? What I want you to take away from this is that the gifts are to be used for the building up, the edifying, the encouragement of the body of Christ. But the gifts are, there is an order and, and it's not an order, a lot of times it's not an order that I like. Sometimes God does stuff that really makes me uncomfortable. But there is a godly order to the way things are done. Okay. And, and when that order is followed and all people are invested in the plan that God has for the proper functioning of his body, um, nothing can shake it. Nothing. Um, so, to recap, real quickly, not everybody has every gift. We should desire the, grip, the gifts, especially the greater gifts, the ones that are um, uh, more in use for the building up of the body. <clears throat> there is an order in which these things are to be used. Uh, you have to be willing to be used for the gift to work in you. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this should all be driven, this should all be motivated, uh, this should all be built on the foundation of love. And that love, that agape love, is the love that God has for us. It's not something that we can do in our own strength. We can't. Um, it's, it's got to be something that God builds in us. And you've got to be willing for this to be built in you. So, what's your role? What's your role? What role are you to be playing in the body of Christ? What, what has God called you to? If you don't know, I want to encourage you. Uh, come to the morning prayer meeting. My heart for this prayer meeting is that God would reveal to us so very clearly what he desires from Jesus Community Church how he wants us to work, where he wants us to work, uh, that we would invest in those things that God desires us to be about. Um, and if you're not sure uh, where your role is, what your role is, come and, and ask God to reveal it to you. And don't give up until he does. And don't be surprised if he asks you to do something you're not comfortable with. 